eager to supply John Blaine's railroad construction camp with fresh buffalo meat, Blaine's son Noah starts out with old Missouri the Trapper on the hunt. They sight a mighty herd of bison grazing on blue flats. Inexperienced, Noah is for firing into the herd. But Missouri, knowing such an act would stampede the critters, sets out to run down a large bull, unaware that a band of Indians is riding up the valley to surround the herd. In the excitement, Noah rides right into the center of the bewildered buffaloes, throwing his horse, uses it for a barricade, and opens fire. The excited animals stampede and rush for Noah, but his good marksmanship averts a terrible tragedy. You got him all right, boy, but you had a mighty close call. <laughs> no. Indians, get up there. We got to get under cover. But I want to take these buffalo back to camp. We ain't got no time for that. No, quick. We ain't got a minute to spare. Come on, let's get out of here. You were hired to build a railroad. Not to engage in saloon brawls. To the ranch judge just to satisfy your personal grievance. I'm sorry, Mr. Blaine. We've got until the 30th to join our line with O'Connor, according to my contract with the government. But to be on the safe side, we should try and finish by the 28th. With hard work and plenty of it, we'll join our piece of road with the O'Connors by the 28th. That's the way I like to hear you talk, Tom. Senator McDowell is going over the O'Connor line now. He'll be here in time to celebrate when we finish. And what a celebration it's going to be. If everything goes right, I'll get a contract for another hundred miles, and you're going to build it. Thank you. But remember, no more fighting. We've got to pull together. Well, we'll be seeing the smoke of all Connor's engine any day now. They say Blaine's given a big shindig. For the reason, show food. That's what we want. We've got all the ties and rails we need. What we have to do now is a lot of hard work. You're right, Pat. The butcher and the Indians are all quiet. We ought to get that on time. Yes. Well, if we don't, it won't be no fault of mine. Yeah. <laughs> June the 27th. This is one of the proudest moments of my life. Gentlemen, you are responsible for my success. You, Rance Judd, started the work. And you, Tom Crosby, brought it to a glorious end. Senator, <laughs> I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to see oh, you. Oh, I'm sure. Well, you made it three days ahead of schedule. Yes, three days ahead of time, Senator. And I want you to meet the men who are responsible for putting this work through in the face of the greatest difficulty. Tom Crosby, Lance Judd, Bart Eaton, Senator McDowell. Glad to meet you. You men have a glorious future. You have earned your promotion. Well, we got it coming to us. We worked mighty hard. Thank you, Senator. I'm going to give the boys a big barbecue, Senator. And we're going to have a wagon race. Wagon race? Yes. Crosby, Judd, and Bart Eaton have an idea. They are great teamsters. And we're going to decide which is the best. I see. Well, it's nearly noon. Time we're getting along to the ceremonies. We mustn't keep O'Connor waiting. Let's go, Senator. I may say, 
that this perhaps is one of the greatest of events. An event that will go thundering down through the ages. You have forged another link in the chain of communication across this great continent. Great cities will rise where you are now standing. The gold spike that has just been driven is symbolic of what this moment means to this great nation. This achievement has been accomplished against almost insurmountable odds. But you have the satisfaction of knowing that your work is done and stands a monument to your tireless and heroic efforts. How's everything, Bart? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm kind of worried about that little room. She ain't feeling none too good. Oh. And that means it'll be a race between Crosby and Judd, eh? Yeah. Well, Crosby better get all the satisfaction he can right now. What do you mean? Nothing. Say, Noah, would you take a little note over to Crosby for me? Why, sure, Bart. What's the matter? You got a piece of paper? How would the back of one of Judd's letters do? Here's one. Where'd you get that? Oh, I picked him up in the saloon the night he had to fight with Crosby. I was going to give him back to him, but I forgot all about it. Hello. Hey, Noah. When I was in the war, we used to use a cipher just like that for sending messages. Listen to this. Road must be delayed at any cost if we are to get Blaine's contract away from him. Tell Butch I will protect him. Well, that means that Judd tried to stop Dad from building the railroad on time. That's exactly what it means. Give me the rest of those letters. I'll see Crosby myself. What are you doing here, Judd? Oh, just looking over your horses? Hmm. Well, you better be looking over. They'll need it. You don't need to worry about it. Bart Eaton, you need to worry about. He's out to get you. Judge Wright, Bart made a very peculiar remark this morning. About me? Yeah. He said now that the road was finished, he was going to finish you. His very words. What did I tell you, Crosby? But what's the use of fighting about second place? I'm going out and beat the both of you.
the fuse. Looks like he's aiming to cripple him. Huh? What did you want to jump like that for? You might have killed yourself. They only allow one man on a wagon at the finish. The race didn't mean a thing, Bart. When I saw you hit the ground, I... Well, I... Uh, I might as well tell you, Tom. I, I never did intend fighting no duel with you. <laughs> it wouldn't be sensible. Oh, that's all right. Let's forget it. Come on. Come on, buck up, old boy. Oh, I... I guess I never did have no brain. Well, I guess it sort of puts a crimp in the old feud. Huh, Bart? Sure does, Tom. I've got the goods on Judd. He's the skunk that's been, been causing you all your trouble. I guess you've seen those before in the Army. Here, read this. Lanning, huh? The New York accomplice. Let me take care of it. Sure, Tom. Guess we better be getting back to the folks, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Tom, you won. You won the race. Good race, Tom. Wonderful, Tom. Wonderful. Thank you. You did awful well, boy. Awful <laughs> well. Great race, Crosby. Thanks. You've won the prize. But what happened out there? Well, someone cut one of the traces on Crosby's wheel team. I, uh, I fixed it. Yes. Risked his life to tie up my trace. The tie that binds. Excuse me, will you, folks? Oh, John. Just a moment. I know all about you. How you tried to delay the construction on the railroad. Judd, you're fired. What do you mean? I'm through? After what Blaine and the senator said? That's exactly what I mean. And you can report that to your friend Lanning. What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. You take my advice, Judd. You'll leave camp before Blaine finds out about it. So somebody in our outfit has been doing a lot of talking. Well, I think I know who it is. Oh, but... Judge. I guess you know what's the matter, Butchdor. Reach for your gun. What? What's the matter with you, Judge? Are you going crazy? 
Reach for your gun, you double crosser. Thrilling race this afternoon? Mm. You know, if it hadn't been sparked, I might have never have won. Oh, I don't know about that. Just the same, I think it was nice of Bart. Losing the race and risking his life to help Tom. Oh. When he gets to building that other hundred miles of railroad, how about them uh, giving me a <coughs> little job? You frightened me. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to frighten you. I had no idea you were out here. I uh, came out to sort of think. Oh, well, that's funny. That's why I came out here to, to sort of think. What were you wanting to think about, Tom? Well, I was thinking that if I'm to build that other hundred miles of railroad for your father. Well, I'd kind of like to be sure that you'll be here, too. What were you thinking about, eh? The same thing. 